Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Early County Middle School annual Title I meeting. Um, this is our meeting that we do once a year to kind of go over uh, Title I, what it is and what, what it provides in our schools. Um, and we have Miss uh, Angela Bell with us, the principal at the Early County Middle School. So we're going to go through the slides. If you have any questions that come up while we're talking, you can um, put those in your chat box at the bottom of your screen or in the Q&A. And uh, I'll try to check that periodically and we'll address those questions as we come to them. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, we want to talk about what exactly is Title I, and Title I is um, federal funds that come down to um, help our students succeed, to supplement what we can do at the local level um, for our students to have academic achievement. Early County Middle School is what is considered a school-wide Title I school. Some schools are called targeted because only certain students can uh, received those services, but Early County Middle School is designated as a school-wide Title I school. Title I funds provide um, professional learning for teachers. It helps uh, provide technology for our students. Um, it also helps provide additional staff. Uh, Title I requirements are that we are to ensure that all children have a significant opportunity to receive a fair, equitable, and high quality education to close educational achievement gaps. So it's to supplement and um, try to provide extra supports for our students so that they achieve academically. All right. And so we're going to, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Ms. Bell to talk about the middle schools. Um, goals. These are the school improvement goals for the middle school. Ms. Bell. Hello, everyone. Welcome um, to our Title I meeting today, and thank you for joining us. I would like to talk to you about what our goals are. We do hope to increase the percentage of students who are reading on grade level and also comprehending on grade level. Of course, we would like all students to reach that goal by the end of our school year, but we are definitely hoping to see a 3% increase on our universal screener known as the rapid assessment. That does help monitor student um, decoding and student comprehension. We also hope by the end of the first semester to um, increase the number of students who score at least a level one on our right score by 5%. We have made significant progress in that area and have been really focusing on writing here at Early County Middle School. We have had a consultant come in and work with our teachers and also model some sessions, writing sessions in our classroom. So we really are focusing on writing because if you have a good writer, Good writers become good readers and good readers become good writers. So we're working to do those two things together. Also, we hope to increase the um, percentage of students who are at grade level on a map assessment. We assess map reading and map math. And it is a good indicator of whether or not um, your school is progress, your student is progressing at the level he or she should. Um, at, over a period of time. And so we hope to improve that percentage by 3% as well. We also hope that 80% of our seventh and sixth and seventh graders show um, growth on our science common assessments and on our social studies common assessments. So those are our goals that you see listed here. We are very proud of our climate rating. We have a four star climate rating, which is, um, there are a lot of factors involved in the climate rating, but one factor that I like to make sure that people understand is our students have, they participate in a survey which rates how they feel at school and what they think about their school. And so I'm really proud of the four-star climate rating that we have. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Um, would you mind sharing with everyone the programs and supports that are in place to help our students? Okay, if you look at the slide, the first thing you see is a list of software programs that we have. 
The first program, Achieve 3000, is a reading program that we use for a small percentage of our students who are having difficulty with reading. And the program is designed to help improve their reading comprehension. As I mentioned earlier, it's designed to help students um, close those reading gaps over a period of time, hopefully within one year. So that is what Achieve 3000 is. The next program that you see, Lexia Power Up, is a program that we refer to as um, a part of our Tier 1 curriculum. And Tier 1 curriculum is curriculum that is available to all students and all students participate in it and have access to it. So Lexia Power Up is a computer-based software program that helps students in three areas, word study, which is decoding and, and reading, recognizing the words that you see on a page. The second area is grammar, which is learning to read and speak um, properly. And the last area is comprehension. So again, we are um, using our teachers um, to provide a, a special comprehension instruction, but that is also supported by Lexia Power Up to reinforce what the teachers are teaching in the classroom. The next program that you see has kind of an odd name. It's called Membean, and it is a vocabulary-based um, software program that all students work independently, and we they're recommended to be in Membean an average of 45 minutes a week, and we hope that they have an average of 70% or greater on the, asset, on the tests or assessments in that program. But it exposes students to a variety of vocabulary words and words that the student may not be familiar with and helps, for, helps those students try to commit those words to memory and a part of their everyday speech. So MEMBEAM really um, is an important program and it also exposes children to a wide range of vocabulary and we hope to help them um, become well-rounded adults um, as a part of using this program. The next program is called MOSAMAC. It is an, um, a trial-based um, study right now. We're using it only in sixth grade science with Miss Lawana Mills and it is um, very much science, technology, engineering, and mathematics based, and she is incorporating it in her sixth grade classroom. So if you have a sixth grade student, please be sure to ask he or she about it. The next program that you see is called USA Test Prep, and it's just that. Um, it is a computer-based software program that reinforces all academic subjects, reading in, um, English language, um, mathematics, science, social studies, also algebra one, ninth grade lit and physical science. So our teachers use that program in conjunction with their classroom instruction to help students in commit those standards that they're taught um, to mastery. It's also used as a classroom assessment tool for teachers. The last one, IXL, is also um, all subjects and our teachers use that um, a good bit in reading and math to reinforce um, classroom-based instruction. So as you see, we have a variety of software programs and we try to balance that with um, teacher-based instruction as well. These programs can be used um, at home and at school, the following, I will say Lexia Power Up can be used at school or home, Membean as well, and IXL. USA Test Prep, um, the teachers, if they assign a student a unit in USA Test Prep, it can be done at home. But the three main ones that can be done anytime at home are Lexia Power Up, Membean, and IXL in any subject. So if you are seeing that your student needs additional support, or just has some free time, I would encourage you to have he or she complete those programs. We are one-to-one, -one, so every student here in our building has a Google device, um, or Lenovo Chromebook to be specific, that he or she carries to every class, so they, each child has access to a computer and internet and these software programs. With the help of federal funds in Title I, we're able to have intervention teachers who offer assistance to a smaller portion of our students in the areas of reading and math, and we're really thankful that um, we're able to do that with the use of Title I funds. And the last two things that you see here are after-school tutoring, which we offer on Mondays and Wednesdays every week. 
from 3.30 to 5. And also we have teachers that periodically from time to time will offer to stay an additional day, Tuesday or Thursday, for a group of students who need additional tutoring. So please don't hesitate to reach out to your teacher. If your child is not a regular attendee of um, after school tutoring and may just need help with a specific area or topic, um, our teachers know that they have permission to stay after school and most are willing. And if your teacher isn't able to, I'm sure I could certainly find someone that could help you. The last thing that you see listed here is Saturday school. And we do, we have Saturday school at least once a month. And the hours are 8.30 to 11.30. Students are able to come in in a more relaxed setting and receive additional tutoring and help from our teachers. And our students really seem to enjoy this time and recognize that it is a smaller environment. There are less distractions and they get the one-on-one -on -one help that sometimes um, they may have gotten at school but needed additional practice. And Saturday is a great day to come in and receive that additional help and then um, the students have the rest of the afternoon free so I would encourage you to reach out to me if you have any questions about any of these programs or supports. Thank you. So we talked about the programs and supports let's talk about the curriculum that you use at the middle school. Well everything that we use of course is guided by the Georgia Standards of Excellence so in reading and language arts, we have what we call a novel-based, um, we use a novel-based reading strategy, which means our teachers use a variety of literature, novels, short stories, poems, poetry, um, graphic novels to teach students um, reading and reading comprehension skills. And this, they also like to teach um, grammar through the use of reading and writing. So for that aspect, we don't necessarily have a particular program name that, a te that someone might recognize, but we do use research-based strategies in our reading and ELA classrooms. In math, we have um, adopted this year a curriculum called Big Ideas Math, and it is a very um, challenging mathematics program and it offers a variety of uh, resources for our teachers. Science and social studies, we have an adopted textbook in both of those, but again, they're all guided by the Georgia Standards of Excellence. So um, that can all be found online if you'd like to visit there. Thank you very much. And would you just take a few minutes to talk about testing? Testing. Well, here at Early County Schools in our school district, we we like to emphasize that a test score doesn't define who you are. We measure learning in a variety of other ways. How, so the tests that you see here are one measure of how students are learning. So the, the list that you see here, the end of grade milestones is a federal requirement and state requirement. They take ELA and math in grades six, seven, and eight. Science is only assessed in grade eight and social studies is only assessed in grade eight. So um, the state and federal governments have really worked hard to try to minimize the number of assessments that students are taking in class. The other assessment that you see listed on the left, um, Algebra 1, we do offer a ninth grade Algebra 1 in eighth grade, and an end of course um, test is required for that. We also offer various academic screeners, as you see listed. I've, I've mentioned, don't mention them earlier, Write Score, which is assesses which assesses your student's ability to write. And RAPID is your reading, decoding, and comprehension. And then MAP, reading, and math. Can the students really apply everything they've learned in, um, or use in math word problems or when reading a large piece of text for reading? On the far right, you see the milestone levels, level one, beginning learner, two, developing, three, proficient, and four, distinguished. We are really striving. You are considered um, passing without needing additional assistance at level three, and that's where we strive to have all of our students. The last assessment mentioned um, 
it's called WIDA and it is an act, it's a test to measure, um, to help gauge students who have English as a second language. And at this current time, we don't have any students that are required to take WIDA. So. Thank you, Ms. Bale. Um, I do want to uh, mention the, the district and school and parent and family engagement plan. And if you'll bear with me, I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen so that I, well, I might can go ahead and pull it up. So let me see. Is that changing for y'all? Ms. Bell? Okay. Um, so I want to take you to our school's webpage. Um, it's www.early.k12.ga and our plan is to have a recording of this webinar with the slides so you can still access that information in the links. Um, but if you go to our school's website and you go to the district tab and come down to federal programs, um, here is where you can find our current um, school improvement plans, uh, comprehensive needs assessment. We do we do a comprehensive needs assessment every year, and that's what our school improvement plans are based on, as well as our district plan. This is where you can find the district enga family engagement plan, um, as well as the middle school. If you look in the Title I packet that was actually sent out through Remind to all parents at the middle school, um, it includes the family engagement plan and the compact. And I'm just going to just touch base on that real quick. Um, it's located right here and it just is saying how we engage parents, how we work together with parents to help students achieve academically. The compact has a list of what can happen in the classroom, what can happen at home, what students can do. Um, so I encourage you to share this with your student or um, and talk with your student about this and, and the teachers. Um, and then the family engagement plan, some of the same um, is how we're how we're getting together, what our goals are. Um, it talks about the stu the school parent compacts, um, how we communicate. Um, I will say that we communicate through Remind, uh, which is actually synced with our student information system. So please remember that if your phone number changes, if your address changes, that you need to have that information updated in our Infinite Campus Student Information System. You can do that through the um, parent portal. And I'm gonna just touch uh, base on that for a second and show you how to get there. So when you're at our school's website, you just go back to this district tab and where you see central registration, there's a little triangle next to it and it brings up parent portal. Here's where you can get information on how to set up a parent portal account um, right here. Um, and then here is how you can instructions on how to update your contact information in parent portal um, as well. So that information is there. Feel free to contact me if you need any help with that. You can also visit our central registrar, which is located at Darley County Middle School, um, and uh, get your information updated that way. Or you can send them an uh, email at helpdesk at early.k12.ga.us. Um, so let me see if I can get back to my screen. And um, that's the information on the school parent compact and the family engagement plans. Um, let me go to my next screen. Parents also have a right to know uh, if a teacher has met qualifications and licensing criteria, if a teacher is teaching under a provisional or emergency status, if a teacher is teaching in field or um, of discipline of the certification if a child has provided services by a paraprofessional. You can always request that information from your child's school. Also, we, we touched base on the climate score, but um, schools are graded. Uh, they have a report card, so to speak. You can find the link to that on our website as well. Um, as a matter of fact, it's on the federal page. We'll go back to that page. This page where we had all of the 
um, information listed. Um, right here is where you can get the link to, you can follow this link to get to the early county school system report card. You can also always provide feedback on any of our plans by clicking here. Just while we're there, I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Um, also, talking about Parent Portal, I wanted to let you know that when you um, access your Parent Portal, you can also access SLDS. Now, you have to do that from a computer. You can't do that from the app. But if you log into your Parent Portal through a computer, you can access SLDS for your student. And in SLDS, you can um, access your child's academic history in Georgia public schools. You can, um, and that's their Lexile scores, their milestones, their grades um, for their whole history of being in early county schools. You can also, that's where you, you would click on the performance box when you get into SLDS. You can also click on resources. We were talking about the um, Georgia performance standards. When you click on resources, um, your child's current schedule will come up and you can click on a class. If your child's having uh, or struggling in math, you can click on their math class. If you know the specific standard that your child is struggling with, you can click on that standard and um, it will take you to resources, online resources that are available for that standard that specifically address that standard. So it's a really good resource to use as far as getting online help um, for your child um, through SLDS. And there's some other um, things that you can click that may be available on your child's SLDS, but the performance and the resources will always be available there. And then um, I just want to say that if you want more information, you can always visit our website and the Georgia Department of Ed website and get information on state report cards, Title I documents, our calendar, and testing information. All right. That, that's all I have. Uh, Ms. Bell, do you have anything else you'd like to add? I do not have anything else, but thank you so much for joining us today. And again, right. if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Okay, let me, uh, while you're here, let me um, check the chat and make sure I think we, we had one question. I think we ad you addressed that one already. So, um, all righty. Well, if anybody else doesn't have any other questions, we appreciate you coming and being a part. And like I said, we will have the recording made available and we will also have the uh, slides there with links to the information we've shared today. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Bell, for coming on and um, presenting for us today. And thank you so much for having me. Good All right. Y'all have a good night.